Hey guys, switching gears here about cars. I want to talk about cars for a quick minute here. Cars should only be 5% or less of your total net worth. I see that as I just got back from running here, wait for the rain to finish and I'm back from the run. You know, it doesn't rain for long here in Thailand and I like doing my shows in batches. So let me go and spit this with 13% battery remaining. Haha. -ha. You know, and just talk about cars, you know. I used to be quite a quite a gearhead or motorhead, you know. My kids, my sons, my two boys, they like cars too. And I used to be a racer, you know, I was an autocrosser, did a lot of driving schools, did a lot of tracks, just play my old shows and you'll see that I was a real car head or a real gearhead as they call it or whatever, right? And I was known throughout most of my uh, college, you know, I didn't have a car as a teenager, not till college, but I was noted as like the guy that was always in the junkyard scrapping around on uh, old Volkswagens and Audis and BMWs scraping up for spare parts or whatever to build my little race car and whatnot, right? So I kind of got into the whole tuning scene or whatever of, you know, making my car go faster and shit like that, right? And one thing I noticed as I was in school, even in high school even, Almost all my peers had cars, you know, like newer vehicles or whatnot. I'm talking like fifteen, twenty thousand dollar cars and whatnot. And I went to a mostly Asian high school, and uh, I guess that's why. But for whatever reason, it seemed like a lot of people in the world were more well off than me, or they were more blessed than me. You know what I'm saying? And as for a while, I resented that until I was able to go into business for myself and make my own money. And then, strangely enough, I wasn't even really tempted to buy these same cars and automobiles and even roll with the same type of people, you know what I'm saying? Because I knew how to make my own and this and that and the other. But until such time, though, I drove around beater Volkswagens for the longest time, and I still do to this day. I, I actually have a 1998 Volkswagen Cabrio. It's my been my car for the last couple of years, you know, 240,000 miles, and I barely drive it at all, right? I don't really like driving anymore, really. So... And even here in Thailand, I've got an old fucking German car, right? So cars are not my thing. I don't have them to impress people. I'm not here to, you know, race them, go fast with them, and anything of that nature. It's just a box that moves me around when I have to, when I don't feel like taking a taxi, basically. But cars are something entirely different in American society, at least in terms of the dating world. Uh, many women... <laughs> past, present, and future have rejected and are going to reject me based on my choice of car, which is actually quite to their own detriment, but, you know, it is what it is or whatever. There, there are many women on this planet that will judge a man by his car. There are many men, likewise, that will judge a man by his car, and uh, that's, that's pretty foolish, you know what I'm saying? American society is a society in which people are so used to living on credit and having the latest, greatest whatever kind of machine for status or whatever they can have that it's like I don't even want to play that fucking game anymore right so yeah it's it's almost like I just want to excommunicate people from my life that think that way right it's so so fucking retarded to have not even an asset to have a liability that's worth nothing in five years old to find your entire self-worth you know what I'm saying uh this is ridiculous. I, I've noticed that, I don't want to say it's a black or white or Asian or Latino thing, but women of all ethnicities in America and Canada have judged me and rejected me based on my car. You know what I'm saying? So I've learned now that by driving an old so-called bucket or whatever, it's like your best defense against uh, these type of people or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Because I really, it's really like a bitch filter, actually. I consider having a uh, an old bucket German car that maybe they don't want to be seen in or embarrassed by or whatever, you know, and it's a, it's a goddamn shame, but I mean, it's, uh, you know, women put up filters to protect themselves, and I, as Jimmy from The Shimmy Show, I put up filters to protect myself, you know. They might just see a bucket car, but they might not see the condo or the home or the fucking rental or the websites or the other assets that I have that enable me to have free time to, you know, exercise, work on my body, do my movies, travel, and, you know, get massages and all that kind of cool shit, and pretty much enjoy my life and not be a slave to a fucking machine in a parking lot, you know what I'm saying? I remember when I was about 19 or 20 years old, 
you know, before my internet business really took off, I had a job in a computer lab at uh, San Francisco State University, right? It was like up on the, I think it was maybe the fifth or sixth floor of the main library, right? So I would, I would be up at a building at about this high, and I could look down and see my car in the parking lot, you know, it would look like the size of a Hot Wheels car from up that high, you know what I'm saying? And all that I could do is look at that car and watch it be parked for like 98% of the time. And all I would do is just look down at it. I would even sometimes like, I would tilt and crack the sunroof up a little crack, like, you know, a German car, you know, Volkswagen guys know what I'm talking about. You know, you'd crack or tilt the sunroof or whatever, just so you could have that little look to it or whatever on the roof, you know. So I'd look down at my car in the parking lot and smile every now and then during my breaks. And I realized this fucking sucks. I'm a slave to a fucking machine, to a metal box manufactured in Germany. So as far as the whole car payment game goes, that's a slavery trap that uh, I don't want to see people get into. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's definitely a slavery contract. If you cannot afford the car that you have to pay cash for it, you simply cannot afford to own it. You can't afford to maintain it. You can't afford to fix it, register it, insure it. You know what I'm saying? It's a fucking liability. You need to just get yourself a good pair of shoes like me or a fucking hoverboard and keep it moving, you know, and fuck what everyone else thinks. You know what I'm saying? Because at least you're not a slave to whatever. But yeah, that's the trap that so many young people, self-included, have fallen into. You know, the whole uh, gotta keep up with the neighbors, keep up with the Joneses to have this, that, and the other. And it's a goddamn shame. That's what keeps people from being in places like this here. You know, keeps you from owning places like this when you have such a chokehold on uh, whatever little income you got. So, yeah, that's all I wanted to rant about. Cars, though, man, really. Uh, that, that's the lesson I learned. It should only be 5% of your net worth, meaning if you've only got $10,000 to your name, then you should only have a $500 car. You know what I'm saying? If you've got 100 racks, then maybe you could have a $5,000 car. You know, if you finally make the million dollars, then you can get a $50,000 car. But it shouldn't go backwards the other way around. Otherwise, what's going to happen as soon as some hiccup occurs in your life, guess what's going to be the first thing on the chopping block? Vroom, vroom, vroom. Your car, man. So you got to put all that into consideration. It is all a big social engineering trap, a big scum to keep you in the place where you're at. So remember the 5% rule as far as the car thing goes, man. Don't become a slave to a machine or for a house that matter or for anything that's not going to produce anything for you or is definitely not going to be worth anything in the future more than you've paid for it. That's totally fucked up. Don't invest in anything that rusts, rots, or depreciates. The best way I could put it to you. This includes cars, humans, perishables, etc. If it rusts, rots, or depreciates, it's probably a bad investment. You know, it's more like a personal, personal happiness thing, I guess. So, with that said, I'm out of the pool. I'm drying off, air drying here. Shemmy from the Shemmy Show signing out. Peace and hair grease. I hope this lesson has been helpful and informative. And uh, you guys that do got your cars, enjoy them. And I'll enjoy the pool here and the massage table. Peace.